Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you are having a blessed day. I'm going to wait till you guys get on here. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him honor. I pray that you are having a blessed day. Come on, somebody give him praise. Today is the 10th day of the full liquid fast or Daniel fast, whichever one that you are actually on at this time. Praise God. Give him honor and give him praise, everybody. All right. So a um, few of you are on here. So let me go ahead. So basically, this is the whole, thus said the Lord, and this was something that he has impressed upon me for a, a while. Okay, so it's called the destruction of the family and hearts are cold, said the Lord. So I'm just going to get straight into it because I, I feel the Holy Ghost so impressed upon me about this subject. So I'm going to try to walk this thing through. The enemy attack marriage first. Y'all remember... Christian marriages, what, 97% divorce, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. But he attacked the family first, the, the marriages. Because when he attacked the marriages, then it broke down the whole family unit. So I'm going to walk this thing out. The whole thing is God is a God of love. The enemy wants you to fear. You see, every demonic entity, it actually carries other demonic entities. What am I saying? Demons do not flow by themselves. They flow together. For the spirit of hate is fear, selfishness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You greed. All these spirits are working together. So I'm going to break this thing down. So basically, this was what God was saying. Start praying for your family. Somehow, we allow the enemy to come into and destroy every family God the issues. Issues we've never had before, cussing each other out, stealing from each other, lying to each other, killing one another. God says, start praying for your family, not just your immediate family, but friends. Come on, somebody. You might not want to touch this subject tonight, but we're going to touch it. Most people are killed by people they know. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell you what God is saying. He said, the hearts of my people have waxed cold. The enemy that came in and, and got that fear and that anger and offense. Fear, anger, offense. I've been hearing that for months. God said, stop getting so offended. But the reason why people get offended is because of pride. Come on, somebody. We're we going to peel that onion back tonight. So God is saying, there's so much that you're carrying. Anger, which is danger. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God was saying, the family needs to come together as a unit again. Start praying for your family. What I've done, and I'm going to tell you everything I've done. I write down all my family's name, even the last name. Let's say the Dixons, then the Brannons, or um, the Landrys, or whatever the case, right? And I write them down, and I put them in my Bible. And when I'm praying or whatever, then I take it out, and I put my, I, I anoint my hand with oil. So you can imagine the paper is going to be oily and tore up after a while. And I do it lightly, and I pray over them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, every family member that is not saved, Father God, I gird them, Father God, in the spirit. I stand in the gap for them, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you change their hearts. There we go. We're praying, God, change them. God, change them. You have to be specific in this hour. God, change their hearts. Father God, let them, let them be able to hear you. Stop the enemy's voice, Father God, in their mind, in their spirit, in their soul, so that they may hear you, Father God. Excuse me, that they may fear you and get to know you, God. You have to be specific. That's why a lot of prayers are not being answered. You're just praying. No, especially when you know they have demonic strongholds alcohol, drugs, lust, fornication, adultery, whatever they're in. Stop badgering people. Stop making people feel bad. Oh, they just this. Oh, they just that. Or even your children. Oh, they're bad. Stop speaking like that. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love it should eat the food thereof. What am I saying? You guys didn't spoke stuff into your family's life. I think we all have, ignorantly. Just be honest. Oh, you're bad. Oh, you just like your dad. You just like your mom. You just like this one. 
Stop speaking death. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. And speak life to each other, God says. You wonder why the family is messed up? Look around. Because if you are a Christian, then guess what? That's your, that's your fault. You don't hear what I just got through saying. God said he wants the Christians in the family to hold up the family. Just like they held up Moses' hands. Come on, somebody. Everybody can't pray themselves out. Everybody can't walk it out. Everybody can't talk it out. Because guess what? Everybody's at different places and being processed differently. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So those that are stronger have to bear the weak, God says. Quit talking about them and, and, and pray for them so that God could correct it. And hold on. God may not use you. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm, I'm preaching up in here tonight. God may not use you because here's the deal. The reason why your family treats you that way, they are familiar with your old ways. They're familiar when you wasn't saved. They're familiar with the lies. They're familiar with the sin. That's okay. Don't even worry about it. Your position is to keep praying for them, and God is going to send somebody. Because you know how Paul and Apollos, what happened? They had to be separated because there's so much power in between them. One water, one planet. Come on, somebody. And vice versa, God says. So, what God is saying in this hour is that we have to come back. We have to come back to the oracles. God wants the family saved in this hour as a whole, not just one or two people and you're treating everybody bad. Come on, somebody. Walk with me up in here. How do you treat your family? Be honest with yourself. How do you treat your family? Because I know for a fact most family, pe most family members, this is what y'all do. Y'all will treat outsiders better than your family. And I'm not saying they haven't done anything. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying God says that it is time for the Christians in each family to pray over your family. Even the ones that you don't like. You heard me. Even the ones that are doing this. Even the ones that are doing that. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what God say. It is time for us to bear them up. It is time for us to keep them prayed up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Write their name in your Bible. Pray a prayer over them at night. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God said it is time for us to stand in the gap like never before. Not just for family, but for your friends, for your co-workers. Things going bad on the job. Quit talking about people and pray for them. Yes, sometimes you have to call out things, especially if you are a prophet. But for the most part, God says that our hearts have gotten cold to where we're only caring about ourselves you see that's what that pandemic did i'm gonna tell y'all the truth that's what that pandemic did it came and it brought fear and what i told you it just didn't bring fear it brought selfishness it brought it brought to, to where people are all about themselves you know what they're saying they're saying that so many people are hoarding like you're buying all kind of stuff and, and that's good you should be buying stuff but if you guys don't open up your eyes and see what's happening they're getting ready for a major shutdown again. And this time, things are going to get more serious. Because here's the deal. People are buying stuff. I, let me tell you something. The elite already know. So, they, so they, they're going to tell their family. And their family going to tell other people. Y'all understand what's happening, huh? That's why I know I noticed it about three or four months ago. How the shelves were kind of like just, you know, empty here, empty there. I said, God, they're going to subtly bring this thing in. I'm telling you guys something. They're going to subtly usher this stuff in. And I guess, and it's like, what they want everybody to do is to fight each other. That's what God keeps showing me. I don't know if y'all remember Hunger Games. Go look at that movie. Um, Divergent. Go look at those movies. Even Squid Games. What happened in Squid Games? Most of y'all looked at that. I couldn't, that, that was just, I'm telling you, God keeps showing me them Squid Games. These are the games that they're playing even now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The half and the half knots. You guys can't see the, the hand right on the wall. So God says the only way that we're going to make it is by unity. That's what I'm talking about. This whole I said all that to say that's what's going to keep us in this hour, unity. Quit getting offended at people. Quit getting mad at people. It is okay. The Bible says be ye angry but sin not. Don't go too far. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We've got to start walking in love and forgiveness. And, 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 and I'm going to peel this onion all the way back. The only way that we can defeat hate is with good. You cannot, you cannot defeat hate with hate and evil with evil. That's what the enemy have come into the church, and not just in the church, in the whole world. Got people really angry because he knows that that's going to produce a spirit of lawlessness, a, a spirit of Balao. You see, Balao is a territorial demon. This territorial demon wreaks havoc and, and tries to cause people to kill each other, murder each other, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. What am I saying? 
Start praying over your family. Start praying over your streets. Start praying over your homes. Start praying over your cities. Start praying over your towns. I've been telling y'all that for years. Are y'all catching it now? That's how serious it is. Talking about it is not going to move God. Crying about it is not going to move God. But prayers of the righteous God say moves God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You didn't hear what I just said up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But some of you just want to hold on. I'm going to be mad at this person. I'm not saying people don't do people wrong. But truth be told, if you really want to be honest, we've all done people wrong. Somebody did this. Some, we all have done it. So in this last hour, God said, get your minds right. Get that anger out your heart. Get that unforgiveness out your heart. Get that bitterness out your heart. Get that lying out your heart. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm, and hold on, it's not about judging anybody. It is about just true character, who you are in Christ. Because I'm going to be honest with you, we talk about it more than we be about it. You heard what I said up in here, up in here. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And God was saying that the power is in your heart. It's love, the power of love. The enemy has tried to, he tried to take the love out your heart. As a matter of fact, I don't know why. Y'all know I always got a story. Let me tell y'all something. And I, I did this and said this when I wasn't even saved. Didn't even know that this was of God. Didn't even know that that's the way we're supposed to roll. I have been through so much. And I, I've told most of you, well, probably all of you, very transparent, right? But I'm going to tell you something. What I always just told myself on a personal note. I've been through so much hurt and pain. We're going to just talk about it with men. Are you going to think that I'm going to let each of them have their way and win? I never stop smiling. I never stop being without joy. Because I told myself a long time ago, no matter what I go through, I'm not going to let anyone steal the joy because God gave it to me. The laughter in my heart. The smile. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. What has happened? Come on, somebody. It seemed like something small, but y'all just don't know how big this is to God. What has happened? Who has taken away your smile? What has taken away your joy? People don't even smile no more. They walk around. I mean, just looking at you like you you didn't did them something. I ain't did it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you. And that's because they don't have the joy of the Lord. Looking for someone or something. Y'all know it's true. Looking for someone or something to take that pain away. And no one can do it but God. No one can heal you but God. No one can deliver you but God. No one can give you joy but God. And, and these temporary things, man, woman, money, honey, and funny, th that may give you a temporary fix. But it ain't nothing like God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We're doing everything but we should be doing what that Bible tells us to do. Everything that we have a problem with, there's an answer in that Bible. But you see, we the people... We like to go and do it the hard way instead of ask God, God, how do I get out of this situation? How do I forgive this person? How do I pray for this person? How do I, I, God heal me? Why haven't I been healed? Why haven't I been delivered? There are reasons. What are you holding on to? What, what, what door do you have open? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching up in here. What door do you have open? Don't you understand how the enemy does? The enemy tries to thank you, Lord. The, the enemy tries to intimidate us. That's his number one thing. Intimidation and fear. Because if he can intimidate you to make you believe that you are not who God say you are, then you're not going to operate into that do the most power. You didn't hear what I just said. His whole thing is to try to steal your identity. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And God keeps saying, you got to see what I see. I see you blessed. I see you prosperous. I see you a warrior. I see you a conqueror. I see you healed. I see you delivered. You got to see what God sees. I see your family saved. I see your family healed. I see your family delivered. But you got to believe it and quit talking. Uh, uh, quit talking. You, you check this out. Stop calling people what you see and, and, and reverse the curse. Let's say some example. Let's say somebody acting irate, your, your husband or whatever the case may be. Oh, you just blah, blah, blah. Why don't you switch it? Okay, mighty man of God. Okay, mighty woman of God. That young man and that young child that's acting... How you doing? 
mighty young man, young man, or mighty young woman, you have to speak life to them in order for you to see a change. But if you keep calling them bad, or you keep calling this, and you keep calling them that, then that's what should prosper. Because the Bible says that call those things as be not as though they are. So if you're calling them something that they ain't got no business being called, then don't you understand? That's the negativity right there. Hallelujah. 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 You know, and, and that's why I, I do these GoFundMe's, by the way. We feed a couple of schools. I'm not going to say the names or anything up here, but they're in Atlanta. Y'all ain't going to believe this. High school students, sometimes they go to school, they can't afford lunch. So me and my daughter, we started a pantry at the school. So I buy extra stuff on purpose to make sure if they're hungry, that they got something to eat. You know, between classes, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking. Do you know what it's like not to have lunch money? Because you know people like to clown, right? What am I saying? We have a problem. We have a problem, church. We have a problem, church. Why is it that these kids don't have um, money for lunch? Many of them are starving. So if you're starving, you think you really want to learn? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So... What am I saying? It is time for the church to be the church like never before. Let's give back. Let's stop being so focused on ourselves and start really building that community again. That's what God is talking about. And, and you see, people don't want to hear stuff like this because it, it ain't exciting. It ain't this. Until it hits your family. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Until it hits your family. I say until it hits your family. Hallelujah. So it's just a simple one. It's, it's not a. It's not you know gonna get most of y'all excited. I get that, but it should. God cares about us as a family unit. God wants us to start loving each other back to life. That's what I got up on here to say. God wants you to walk in forgiveness. God wants you to walk in love. God wants you to call those things as being not as though they are. God wants us to start praying for each other. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what that said the Lord. He's been on me for, with this one for a minute. I'm, I'm not kidding. God wants the family unit back together. Yes, yes. We know that these are the last days. And it should be as God has stated in Revelation. But I will tell you this. There's a revival coming. There's a revival coming. I'm going to say it again. There's a revival coming. But it starts with the people of God. And and let me tell you something. Every time a revival started, it only started with two, three people. You don't need 50. You don't need 60. Oh, it's going to hit them anyway. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. Oh, it's going to hit them. It's going to hit them. But the power of the anointing is love. Ask God to heal your heart. Ask God to heal your heart because that's what's happening. People killing people like never before. People doing this like never before. People are hurting because they're not healed and delivered. And to be honest with you, right there in the church, people are not healed and delivered right in the church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You can be sitting up under that word still in bondage. And God is tired of that. God said, I, I need the anointing in my churches for real. But you can't have the anointing if a person don't do this on, on a personal relationship level. You have to go personal. This can't be just a public thing. You know how people like to, hallelujah, in public. No, no, what you doing behind closed doors? Are you truly praying? Are you truly fasting? Are you truly reading your word? Because that's what it's going to take to change this stuff. And, and don't think that it can't. Because let me tell you something. I truly believe the power of God is still real. We just have to do it his way. The reason why the church haven't seen the anointing the way we should see it is because we haven't been obedient as a whole. You keep trying to, you see, this click trying to do this over here. This click trying to get do this over here. And this click trying to, and God said, no, 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 no. When God presented the children of Israel, we were the children of Israel together. Come on, somebody, I just said something. It's too much it's too much killing going on God says even with family members it's too much fighting it's too much bickering and then when people die you you want to cry you want to no 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 call your family tell them you love them the person that has offended you call it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong I'm telling y'all what's happening and God said have you even counted the cost that just maybe I'm taking 
a lot of people because they're not going to be able to stand the evil that is coming. Y'all think people are just dying. God is God is also strategic. God knows exactly what he's doing in this hour. And it's time for us to come closer to God like never before, people. I'm telling you what I hear. It is time. Stop being hateful. Stop being angry. Stop, stop. I don't know why people think talking to people crazy. You think that's cool. That's not cool. That's worldly. You don't have to curse. You don't have to fuss. You don't have to do all that to get your point across. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God up in here. That's all God wanted me to tell you today. Something simple but real. Love your family. Forgive your family. Call your family. Even if they act funny with you. Do your part. Pray for your family. Put their names in that Bible. And, and if you don't want to put everybody's name, put the family. You know, like I got the Dixon family. I got the Brandon family. I got the Landry family. I got the Shagwas family. You know, extensions of your family. Pray over your family. I keep hearing that. Y'all wondering why. Oh, I got to say this. Especially since school didn't start. Pray over those children. Pray over the schools. Ride, 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 ride through their praying. Y'all, yeah, yeah. thank you, Lord. I don't think y'all understand how deep this is. My God, my God, this is where we at. Talking ain't gonna get it. Fussing ain't gonna get it. Posting ain't gonna get it. All this crazy. Do it God's way, and watch what happened in your city. Watch what happened in your town. Watch what happened in your house, said God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So I just wanted to get up on here and tell y'all because the enemy think he's slick. He didn't came into the family unit and just he tore it up. He tore it up. A lot of things that are going on today, and y'all might not believe it, but I'm telling you what God said. It's the church fault. We stop having that standard. What is that standard? The standard of God. Start letting this slide, that slide, people slide. And now we're in trouble. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to keep reiterating the same thing. I'm, I just I told you what God said. And I'm starting with me. I mean, I have been calling people that I don't normally call, talk to them, letting them know I love them. Yeah, at first it feels uncomfortable. It does, especially when y'all don't have a relationship. But somebody got to try. Somebody got to keep trying. Mm, come on, somebody. Everybody can't just, oh, I'm just busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. It seems like the only time families are getting together is for funerals, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I feel the power of God. God's doing something in this last hour. But don't miss it. Don't miss it, people. Well, all right. I just want to tell you all that. Y'all know what time it is. Roll out soldiers, for that is truly who we are. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, love each other. Forgive each other. Love your family back to life, says God. Amen. Y'all share this. Share this. Share this. And, and I don't know. You could do this. It's, it's easy to hate. It is hard to love. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all have a good night.